Hey gardeners, we're going to do take two of a floral pumpkin arrangement, so stay tuned. About a month ago, I made a flower arrangement in a pumpkin, and just a regular orange pumpkin. And I was really happy with how everything turned out. I loved the flowers I used. I used some uh, baby butternut squash in it, and just, it turned out really great. Took it in the house, I watered it every day, and then about four days after I had, it in, had it in the house, I noticed the pumpkin starting to deteriorate. So I uh, said, oh boy, this pumpkin is not lasting. The flowers last, outlasted the pumpkin by far. So um, I said, well, I'm, I videoed it and everything, and I just said, no, I'm not gonna show that video because it just didn't last as long as I wanted it to. So I was watching uh, the other day, I was watching North Lawn Flower Farm, her YouTube channel, and she and I have become friends. Her name is Danielle, she's in zone 6B like I am. And she did a floral arrangement in a pumpkin and she did several steps that I did not do on my original, my first pumpkin. So you'll see in the video, I'll show you the steps uh, that I'm talking about. But I did that this time, so I'm, I'm, you know, got fingers crossed. I think it's gonna last longer and I think it's gonna do better. So I'm not gonna post this video until after four days and making sure that, you know, my pumpkin lasts a little longer than I, than my original one. So if you're seeing this, that means it lasted longer than four days. So anyway, here we go. I wanted to preempt this video. Is that the right thing, preempt? Anyway, to show you nine days later, the pumpkin is still intact. Looks great. A little bit of mold on the inside, but not bad. And the pumpkin outlasted the flowers this time. So you'll see in the video the steps I took to prepare the pumpkin to make it last a little bit longer. So I would call this one a win using this pumpkin as a vase. So I hollowed out the inside of this pumpkin and I could tell it was a little thicker walled pumpkin than the last one I used, which was just your regular orange pumpkin. This is the lighter colored pumpkin. So I hollowed it out. I wiped it out like uh, North Lawn Flower Farm said to do with the Clorox wipe. Then I wiped some olive oil just to try to preserve it. And then I used um, the chicken wire frog which I use quite often in my flower arrangements. Now I'm just pouring in some water adding my greenery. This is just some branches from the maple tree and then a few branches from uh, from a redbud tree and they're pretty pliable. You can just kind of bend them around and I cut deep went on the interior of my redbud bud tree. I didn't want to cut too much off because it's already set its blooms for spring. So I just cut a few branches. Now this is flowering quince. And I also cut just a few branches off of this. It's a brand new bush, so I didn't want to overdo it. And this was just a sucker on the flowering plum. So I, it needed to come off anyway. So I can use that for a little bit of red. I don't want to cut it too long because I can probably use both ends of it. So you just strip all the lower leaves off. You don't want those, as I said, in the water. I just harvest some of this coleus off of the coleus plant right behind me here in the greenhouse. It's been here all summer. And really with coleus, if you want to use that, you need to harvest it the night before and let it hydrate. But I'm going to put it in here and it will hydrate and pick itself up. So I'm not worried about it. A lot of times once the sunflower um, petals are done, 
I strip them off and I use the seed head. These are pollenless uh, and also the birds don't really go after these. So I have plenty of things for the bees and the birds. Don't worry, okay? I have plenty, plenty, plenty of stuff on my property, on our property and in my garden. So that's why I use the, the reason why I use the pollenless sunflowers is if you give sunflowers to someone, you don't want them shedding pollen all over their table. That's, that's not cool. But I like to use the seed heads. And then I bought this, uh, I think it's key lime celosia. I just bought a couple plants to dry. So I thought I would stick some of this down in here as a little bit of a different element. Oh, that looks nice. Once we get all done, I'll actually take a better view for you to see. Cause I know you're not seeing things very well here. This is uh, St. John's wort. It's just a little branch off of it. And these are already dried. These berries are already dried on it. I have these little, um, I think these are Gooligan pumpkins that I grew this year. I grew Jack B. Little and Gooligan. So I think I'm going to actually spear the bottom. These are just teeny ones. Spear the bottom and it'll be a pumpkin within a pumpkin. This is a bamboo stick here, bamboo stake or whatever, skewer. That's what it's called, a bamboo skewer. So I'm going to cut it off, make it a little shorter. And don't stab myself. There we go. And that's just gonna go down in there a little bit. It's a pretty uh, coral zinnia. These are Benares giants. This is a dahlia and a little dahlia bud. This is a Cornell dahlia. Let's add in a few more dahlias. This is autumn fire sedum. The bees are crazy over this. One of the major reasons why I needed to do this arrangement here inside the, inside the greenhouse because the bees wouldn't leave me alone. But I left plenty for them. When you're arranging flowers, and this is from a very extremely non-professional um, thought. <laughs> just keep adding, keep adding things. If you're doing it just for your own pleasure or fun, or even to give it away to someone, then just keep adding, keep adding. Because I think that's one of the reasons why I like to arrange flowers is when you first start making your arrangement, you want to give up because you think, Oh, this is going to look terrible. It's not going to turn out good at all. But just keep adding, keep adding things and different elements until you like it. And this is by no means perfect or it you know, goes by any floral arranging rules. So once this coleus hydrates a little bit and everything else has a chance to hydrate, it's going to do really well. Stick 
one more coleus right in the center. Let's cut it off just a little bit more. Now I have a couple of fountain grass uh, plumes that I may stick in there. And that's an annual grass here in my zone 6B. And I forgot I scavenged some of my berries off my dogwood tree, so I have to use these. I love them. But I'm not sure. I think I'm going to have to cut cut them up a little bit. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to go. Well, I know they're going to go, but where are they going to go? Just kind of there. Oh, I like it. I really like this dogwood. That, that's pretty. Okay, so I'm going to take this to some place that I can show you a little bit better view of it than here in the greenhouse. Hang on, we'll be back. So here it is, a little bit better view for you. And I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. I'm glad that I felt challenged to try again with another pumpkin. So anyway, hopefully maybe this gives you an idea of doing um, an arrangement in a pumpkin. And like I said, if you, if you only had, you know, branches off of trees, that would be really pretty. And some some other berries or whatever you have available to you if you don't have any flowers left in your gardens. Well, thanks so much for coming with me on this Take Two Pumpkin Challenge. And if you like this video, would you please give it a thumbs up? And I really do appreciate your support. So we will see you in the next video. Happy gardening and have a great day. Bye.